How are you tonight? Good. It's good to be here at a special time like this. I'm talking about time. What time is it? Are you wearing a watch right now? What time is it? Huh? I'm sure you've experienced this before. You ask someone else the time and their watch is always either ahead or behind yours. Yes or no? You've noticed that? It's hard to find people who have the exact same time on, on their watch. And that's an interesting thing about time. I even remember a story about a... You remember in the old days, people used to call the telephone operator to check the time. Remember that? Yes. I think they still have it here, don't they? One, two, three? Uh, to, nowadays, it's a, it's a recording. It's a machine, right? But they used to actually have an operator answer the phone to give the time. You would call and say, what time? You'd ask, what time is it? You'd pay a few cents, and, and they would give you the time, the exact correct time. And there was this, this town where a man would call every day to check the time. He would every single day call the telephone operator and ask, what time is it, please? And the telephone operator would give him the time. And week after week, that would happen. One day, the telephone operator said, look, if you don't mind me asking, why do you call every day to ask the time? He said, oh, I'm the man in charge of the clock tower in town. And I have to set the, the clock right every day so the bells will ring at the right time. And she said, oh my God, I set my clock by the clock tower. <laughs> <laughs> so they were, they were both relying on false information. But I want to talk to you today about time. Because we, we are at a time of the year where everybody's thinking of time because we are at the end of a cycle, at the end of a year, and at the beginning of a new cycle, a new year. And we all tend at this time of the year to look back and think at least a little bit. Some people think a lot, a lot more, others don't think too much, but everybody seems to think at least somewhat on how they spent their time, how the year that is finishing has been for them what they have achieved, etc. You just received a magazine with the main events that happened here at the church. So that, that's the kind of thing that we tend to do at the, at the end of, of each year. We look back. But we also look forward because we are beginning a new year. So the subject of time and time passing, it's 2012, and when you were young, Remember, when, when you were young, you, you got very excited about turning 16, and, and then 18, and then 21, and you could buy drinks, right? And we got excited with each, with each birthday, but after 30-something, <laughs> with me, it started with 35, I don't know you, but... At 35, I stopped being so excited about my birthdays. <laughs> so, but this, this thought of we are getting old and the kids who were really little are now taller than us, and this, this thought of time is constantly on our minds, especially at this time of the year. And I want to talk to you about this because... This is so, so important, not just in, the t in terms of time itself, but because time is something very closely connected to God. 
and you'll understand why in a moment. First of all, I'd like to meditate with you on this verse that you'll see on, on the screen. This verse tells us about time, the importance of time. So the psalmist is praying and asking God, teach us to number our days. In other words, teach us to count our days. The meaning of this sentence in the Hebrew is basically, in today's terms, is, Lord, teach me to understand the value of time. Help me understand the value of time and how short life is. That's the meaning of this sentence there. Teach us to number our days. And he adds a consequence to that. He adds a, a result of that knowledge, of that knowledge acquired by that teaching. Basically, he's saying, if you teach me to number my days, if you teach me to value my time, if you teach me to, to use time wisely, then I will gain a heart of wisdom. I will become wise. Knowing how to use your time makes you wise. Wise. When we learn how to use time, we become wise. Which is the same of say, as saying, you become smarter than most people. And if you are smarter than most people, you are ahead of most people. You will have more money than most people. You make better decisions than most people. Your life all around will be better than the life of the average person. If you know, if you learn how to use time well. Your heart will grow wise. You will have insights and understanding that other people don't have. That's the, one of the connections between time and God. When you learn that time is something so divine and you learn to respect it, you learn to use it well, you learn to understand it, it rewards you, it pays you back with wisdom. You know, here's something that you probably never heard before. As I was meditating on this verse, I was thinking, in, in fact, in reality, no one has time. You've probably complained yourself many times or heard people complain, I don't have time, I'm out of time. Oh, I want to do this, but I don't have time. I've been so busy, I don't have time. You've heard people say that? You've said that yourself many times, I've said that too, right? We've all been familiar with, with this expression, I don't have time, I don't have time. I'm, I just, I've been too busy. We all complain about not having time. And this is truer than we appreciate. Because literally, we don't have time. We don't own time. No one has time. Not a minute, not a second, not an hour. No one has time. Is there a place in your house where you keep time? Is there anyone here who has a special cupboard in the kitchen 
or in the bedroom that says, okay, I'm going to keep two months here in the, cap, in the cupboard for when I need it. When I'm out of time, I come here and I get some time out. Does anybody have, have a place like that? Or an account somewhere where you, you keep time? No. No one has time. No one owns time. No one controls time. You can't make time go faster. You can't make it go slower. You can't bring it back once it's spent. No one has time. No one has the control of time. No human being has the control of time. In fact, quite the contrary. Time has us. Time owns you. It's because of time that you are getting older. Is it true or not? It's because of time that some of you have given up on your dreams because it was taking too long for them to happen. And you just gave up. Time beat you. It's because of time that some of you are discouraged. Because you hope for things and, and they don't happen as quickly as you want them to. And time wears you out. So no one owns time. Time owns us. The best we can do with time or about time is learn how to play along with it. Learn how to use it well. We never have it. We can control it. But we can learn to use it well. We can learn to number our days. To respect time. Are you following me? This is so important for you to grasp because you, you waste so much time in your life doing things that don't bring you any profit. You complain to God and to friends and to yourself in your head that life is not the way you want it to be. That money is never enough. Maybe you hate the job you have. You wish you had a different job. Maybe you complain about your family and so many things that you're unhappy with in your life. You complain about it, but you are not putting in the time to do anything about that. If you did something, if you did at least one thing for each time you complain about your life. If you did just one thing instead of complaining. In other words, you're going to meet a friend and your friend is going to ask you, how is everything? And you're going to complain because that's what you do. That's what you, you go, you've grown accustomed to do is just gripe about your life. You complain about your life. Ah, it's this, it's that, it's the weather, it's the car, it's the child, it's the husband, it's, it's, it's my back. It, you, you're always complaining about something. And you complain and you, you sigh and you say, oh, if instead of doing that, it might take you a minute, it might take you two minutes, or even longer, depending on the type of friend you have, you're, you're talking to. If you took those two minutes, three, five minutes to sit down instead and say, okay, I'm unhappy about my job. I'm unhappy about where I live. You know what? I'm going to start doing A, B, and C to see if I can change my job, if I can, if I can get a different job. If you just sat down, it might take you 30 seconds, maybe a minute or two, about the same time it, it took you to complain, for you to do something productive about that situation, then you wouldn't be where you are right now. 
Do you agree? Maybe your son, your daughter wouldn't be the way he or she is if you would take the time that you have instead of complaining and shouting and doing everything that's not working and tried something different that works. But that's the crazy thing about us. We hope for a better life while doing the same thing over and over again. We hope for a different outcome without changing our behaviors. And logic and intelligence tells me that if I overeat every day, I exceed my quota of food every day, I will never lose weight. So I can't hope that tomorrow I will fit into that skinny jeans if today I just filled my tummy with turkey and, and cake and, and all kinds of food that filled my eyes, that I, I saw in front of me. I can't. I am not going to lose weight unless I change my eating habits. That's obvious. Every, everybody knows that. But instead of doing something with their time, doing something productive, we like to complain, we like to just lament about life and just, you know, look at other people and say, oh, look how easy it is for them. Oh, it's easy for you to say because you don't have my age or because you don't have this problem that I have or because you had it easy, you had people to help you and me and I never had this. It's, it, that's what we usually do. We take our time the time that we don't have, right? We, we take time and we use it badly. We waste our days. We waste every day. And life keeps going by. You pay lip service to the importance of God in your life. Somebody asks you in the street, what's the most important thing in your life? Is it God first? My family second? My health? And yet, these are probably the three last things that you're focusing on right now. Most people will say God, family, health, and yet these three things are the three most neglected things in most people's lives. People neglect their health, they neglect their family, and talk about God, that's, that's the last of, of the list. But they deceive themselves. They tell themselves this story that sounds nice, sounds good, but they never really act on it. So, when you appreciate that time is something divine. That God is, is the one who, who has allowed us to spend any time on this earth. He has the control of the clock. He's the only one who can make a long time, something that would take a long time to happen, happen in a short time. And something that should happen in a short time, take a long time. He's the only one who can do these things because, as the Bible says, for him, a day is, for a, is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. So God, you see, is not tied to this, this time frame that we are all tied to. He's not. And if we learn to connect with Him, really give Him the time of our life, to give Him the place that He deserves in us, then He will teach us wisdom. He will teach us how to save time. You know, things that you're now waiting, you've been waiting for I don't know, God knows how long, 
weeks, months, or years for things to happen, and they don't happen. It seems that the longer, the more, the more time passes, the, the farther away from you that, go, that goal becomes. Why? Because you are not giving the time of your life to God. You are not honoring the owner of time. You're not. And when you do that, you pay. You pay a price. You waste time. And time wastes you. Time wastes you. Your, your eight hours a day or whatever number of hours you work a day, they don't seem to prosper. You see that there are people who, when they go to work, it's like they really focus in one, two, three hours. They are done. They've produced more in two or three hours than most people do in a week. It's like time prospers in their hands. Things happen quickly. Some people, they, at 14 or 16, they are ahead of, of most teenagers, their age. They seem to, to be ahead of time. And they not even necessarily believe in God. But God has promised that when we connect with Him, when we put Him where He belongs, which is the first place of our life, Psalm 25, 14 says that He shares, He lets us in on secret things. God lets us in on secret things. He shares His secrets with us. Which means, as I was telling you earlier, He gives us insight, intelligence. He helps you to, to suss something out very quickly. What takes people ages to get, to understand, you grasp in a matter of seconds. Because God lets you in on certain secrets. You have inside information, you see. God gives you inside information. Because He speaks to you, He reveals you things. He gives you groundbreaking ideas. Ideas that other people look at and think, wow. How on earth did you come up with that? How did you come up with that idea? I wish I had thought of that. Yes, but you didn't. Because you're probably watching the 10 o'clock news. Or something worse. You were wasting your time while that other person was using it well. So God lets you in on, on certain secrets. So you need to learn how to use your time. And one of the most important things that I have ever realized about time is that it's always now. I asked you a moment ago to look at your watch and tell me what time it was. And I heard different answers. One thing I know for sure, right now, the time right now is always now. It's never yesterday, it's never tomorrow, it's never an hour ago or an hour ahead. It's always now. Which means that I need to learn how to use the now to my advantage. And I'll give an example of that. Right now, what's happening? What's happening here right now? Huh? You are in church. You are listening to a message inspired by the Scriptures, right? This is happening here right now. This is what's happening. But in this crowd here today, and the more crowded the place, the easier it is for this to happen. In this crowded place today, how many of you are with your mind somewhere else thinking, 
I gotta get to that New Year's Eve party until when he's gonna talk. <laughs> when is he gonna stop talking? In other words, you are here, but you're not here. You are not in the now. You are not into what's happening here right now. You are not here. You are not in the now. Which means you are wasting your time. The one you don't have. You are wasting time because you are not focusing on what is happening right now in front of you. You are not focusing. Some people are sleeping. Others are paying attention to the funny hat of the other person next to them. Which tells me that if you're doing that, you are a very poor manager of time. Because you don't recognize the now. Right now. You don't realize that the past and the present are never here. I mean, the future. The past and the future are never here. It's always now. Do you hear what I said? Yesterday and tomorrow are never here. It's always today. It's always right now. This is one of the biggest lessons I've learned about time. That I have to learn how to make the most of my opportunity here, right now. I can't... I can't be so arrogant, so proud, so conceited to think that I can control time and I will be here tomorrow. I can leave for tomorrow the things that are in front of me today to be done, such as my salvation. There's a scripture that says, here is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Turn to God while you can, while you can find Him. Today is the day of salvation. But a lot of people come to church and they keep telling them, the devil tells them this story and they believe it and they tell themselves, no, I'm still very young, you know, I, I know I should get closer to God, but when I turn 18, when I turn 25, when I turn 30, you know, when I'm older, I will get right with God, but not now, I, I'm kind of busy, I, I don't have time to devote to church, to go to church right now, so I'll do this, but not now. That's so arrogant. That's so stupid. Who are you to know if you're going to have the time to do this later? Don't you have a brain to realize that this may be your last chance? You're here today, you're hearing about God. God is calling you once more. But perhaps in your mind, you're not even listening. You're not even paying attention. Because you're so proud, so full of yourself, and so wrong. So wrong. There are a lot of people in hell, just like you, regretting right now that they didn't take the opportunity to make right with God when they could. While they could. There are a lot of people in hell just like you right now. I'll stop sinning, but I'll sin a little bit more because I like it. But I'll stop later. I'll drink some more. I'll sleep around some more. I haven't slept with enough girls yet. I haven't slept with enough guys yet. I, st I still have to enjoy the world a little bit more, but I will, I will stop. You're so deceived. The devil has wrapped you around his finger so nicely. You need to learn how to respect time. 
how to number your days, how to count your days. You need to learn the value of now. When I turned to God, I was 14, and one of the things I heard the most from my friends at school and young men and, you know, guys, girls, we just used to be together and do stuff that teenagers do. And I was starting to come to church, starting to take things seriously, so I began to be different, to act different from the way I used to act and be different from them. And when they noticed that I was starting to distance myself from them, I used to hear a lot, man, you're too young for this church thing. You're so young. Enjoy yourself a little bit. By all means, go to church, but on Sundays, you know, if you must go to church, go Sunday morning to the church by all means. But hey, the rest of the week, let's have fun. You're too young for this church thing. And I heard that so many times. So many times. And not least from my parents. I heard that from my parents. Because when I started thinking about going to ministry because I, I really had this encounter with God. I, I discovered something I had never known before. I found my salvation. And when you find your salvation, there's something really interesting that happens. And this is a sign that you can use to tell if you're saved or not. When you received your salvation, when you really received your salvation... You know you've received your salvation when immediately after you want to tell everybody about it. You want to tell everyone about Jesus. You even become a kind of a pain on people's side because you can't let go. You can't stop talking about this Jesus that you found and, and this thing that you read in the Bible and this new thing that you discovered. You begin to really want to give God to people because you received Him, you found Him. It's like when you had a, a, an incurable disease and you struggle with it for years and then suddenly you find a doctor who has a medicine and a cure for your disease. You want to tell everybody who has that disease to go to that doctor. It would be crazy not to do that. It would be abnormal if you kept it to yourself. So it happened to me, I want to tell everybody, and I wanted to not just tell everybody when I had a chance during a coffee break in school or something, I, I wanted to devote my life to doing that because I realized, my God, our family suffered so much because we didn't know God. And there are many families like mine suffering, many people suffering because they don't know what I know right now, so I have to do something to tell them. So I want to spend more time doing that. And I went tell my mom and my dad and I said, look, I want to be a pastor. I want to, I don't want to work for you anymore. I, I used to work for my dad. I don't want to work in, in the business, in the family business anymore. I want to be in church. I want to work and train and become a pastor. I, I want to work for God. And that's when they started going but you're so young. You're so young. You have your life ahead of you. And there was a time when I heard that so many times from friends and from my parents that I came to God and I said, God, you know what? Everyone keeps telling me that I should live my life enjoy my life, and when I'm older, give myself to you. You know what? I want to give you my youth. I don't want to wait until I'm old. I want to give you my youth. I want to serve you with the time that I have right now. 
and do it for as long as you allow me to. I made that prayer. And I never forget that prayer that day. I had no clue what God had in store for me. I had no clue that I would travel to many places and talk about Jesus. I had no clue. I was 16, turning 17 years old. I had no clue. But I knew that I wanted to spend my time with God, serving God. And I made that decision. I didn't want to wait. And I'm not saying this, that you have to do the same, like become a pastor, go into ministry, although some of you here perhaps have been told that same lie. Some of you, there are some young people here who have a lot of potential. You have a lot of dreams. You, you feel the same way I do, but be, perhaps because of your parents, because of society, because of a lot of expectations that have been put on you, you keep telling yourself, no, I'm going to wait. First, I'm going to do this. First, I'm going to do that. There will always be time to do the ministry later. You bought into that lie. You don't know if you will have. The time is now. So urgent is the time that a young man came to Jesus and said, let me bury my father first and I'll come and follow you. Jesus said, no, sorry, I'm not going to wait for you. You want to go bury your father? Be my guest. But I'm going on. If you want to be my disciple, let the dead bury their own dead. You come and follow me. I don't have time. What we are doing is too urgent. So what I'm saying is you have to take the opportunity that is in front of you right now. If you are living in the wrong, if you are living opposite to what God expects you to live, now is the time for you to repent. Now is the time for you to turn back from that. And not to say, I will do it, it's my New Year's resolution, I will do it, I'm sure I'm going to sit down this week, and I, I'm going to talk about it to my wife and, and to my, my pastor, and I'm going to do this. No, not this week, not tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to have that time. If you're going to do something, you've got to do it now. Your life only changes by the things that you do now, not by the things that you say, I'm going to do it later. No, it's only by the things you do now. Even if you don't have the ability to do something right now, you have to make the decision right now that you will do it at such and such time tomorrow or this week. But the decision has to be now. You can't just tell your mind, I'll think about it later, I'll, I'll remember later. No, now. If you want to make things happen in your life, if you want your life to change, if you want 2013 to be better for you, you have to start now doing the things that you know you have to do. Learn this. Grasp this. This is the only thing that matters. This whole thing about midnight and, and champagne and, and all this stuff that people do at midnight on New Year's Eve hoping to get good luck, all of that is a bunch of baloney. All of that never works. How many things have you done on New Year's Eve? Even and including being in church on New Year's Eve. And nothing happened. Do you know why? Because you were hoping that by being in church, your life would be great the following year. And it's okay to be here. It's wise to be here. But it's not all. It doesn't end by being here. You have to make the decisions that God is calling you to make. Are you with me? Yes or no? So I want to call you today to grab hold of, of this concept, of this idea, of this truth. In fact, let me not use this word concept because it sounds like it's, it's something that came out of somebody's head. It's not out of somebody's head. It's from the Word of God. I want you to grab hold of of this truth about time and say from now on I want to learn how to use time well I want to learn how to respect time never be so arrogant as to think that I will have time later to do something if, I, if it's something is so urgent and important I want to do it right now even if the decision 
is right now. I have to do it. So respect time. Learn to use time well. And with your understanding of this, your wisdom about this, you will connect with God. You will learn to grab hold of this opportunity of salvation, of serving God today, and always making sure that you are well with Him in the now, not later. Amen? There is a scripture that says, if a man lives righteously all his life, and in the last day of his life he sins, his entire life of righteousness will be disregarded because of the last day that he sinned. Talk about the value of time. The importance of now. But the opposite is also true. If a man lives his whole life sinning, but on his last day he turns to God, he will be saved. I just don't recommend you to live like that because you don't own time. A lot of people who died did not see it coming. But when the Bible says you, God is, is merciful enough to forgive someone who's lived his lifetime in the wrong, but turn to him in the end, he's talking about his mercy. He's talking about him being a God of a new beginning, of second chances, a merciful God, a God who lives in the now. That's what it means. God cares about the now. What are you going to do right now? That's the question. I'm asking you right now, what are you going to do about your life, about the most important things in your life, including your family, your job, your health, your spiritual life, your relationship with God? What are you going to do right now? Beginning right now. That's the question for you. Amen? And that's the most important thing that matters here today.